Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in to the Forgotten Film Channel. Today's Forgotten Film star is Eddie Dean. Eddie Dean was born on July the 9th, 1907 in Posey, Texas. His real name was Edgar Dean Grossman. In 1931, he got married to Lorraine Donnelly. They had two children and they were together for the rest of his life. He became a pretty popular country and western singer and in 1934, they moved to Hollywood, where he took his hand at the film industry. Uh, he became a pretty po he became a pretty popular entertainer. He was best known as a singing cowboy. In the 1940s, he had a contract with PRC Studios, and he was a star in the very first colorized cowboy movie. He made his final film in 1948 and then focused on his musical career. Both Roy Rogers and Gene Autry had called him the greatest singing cowboy of all time. And in the 1950s, he had two big hits along with multiple other songs that were co-written by Lorraine. In 1962, he went back to acting. He tried his hand at television, but that just wasn't for him. And in 1964, he was one of the founders of the Academy of Country Music. He served as an officer of theirs for 10 years. He retired in the early 1970s and lived out his life quietly in Palm Springs, California, dying on May the 9th, 1999 of heart disease at the age of 92. That was the same year that he was awarded a star on the Palm Springs Walk of Fame. During his 25-year career in the entertainment industry, Eddie Dean appeared in 57 movies. He wrote 23 songs. He made three appearances on two different television shows and was in one made-for-TV movie. And what I have for you today on the Forgotten Film Channel is episode 21 of the Beverly Hillbillies, Jed Play Solomon. Eddie Dean is appearing as a police officer. Oh, I hope that you enjoy it. I want to thank you for tuning in. Have a great today and a better tomorrow. What you want me to do with the sign? Oh, I don't care, Jethro. You might as well burn it. Okay, Ma. <laughs> in here, take it on outside. Okay. What's going on, Pearl? How come you bring in your sign? Oh, Jed, I give up. How can I give music lessons when every time I open my mouth to sing or yodel, 15 dogs jump on me? That's right, Uncle Jed. Last night when I come in, they had my treat on top of the piano. <laughs> that wasn't funny, Jethro. Well, it made Granny and me laugh. Well, it may give me her word that she'd keep them dogs outside, especially while you was performing. How'd they getting in here? I don't know, but we'll find out. Jethro, you stay here and watch the front door. I'll go watch the cellar door. We know he can't get in the back because Granny's in the kitchen. Earl, you go on in the drawing room and cut loose. Go get her, gang. Bone in it for every one of them. set upon by these dogs, and we got to weed out the vicious ones. Jethro, you commence to hand them to me. Yes, sir, Uncle Jeff. Paul, oh, please. Uh, I'm going to handle this, Sully May. Here's a mean-looking one, Pearl. Oh, 
Well, I, 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 I don't reckon he's one of the mean ones, Jed. <laughs> you can keep that one, Ellie. Uh-oh, look what we got here. The ringleader. You ever see such a vicious-looking face? He, he ain't exactly a, 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 a ringleader. He, he just kind of went along with the mob. <laughs> look at this ornery one here. Don't, don't get too close to this one. Look at him. Guilty as sin. He's praying for mercy. I don't even remember seeing this one before. Give me the next killer. How about this mean looking varmint here, Pearl? Oh, let them all stay. <laughs> just, just, just keep them out of the house while I'm singing and yodeling. Well, how'd they get in, Ma? Well, they seem to come from that direction over there. Oh, I wish I was in Dixie, hooray, hooray. In Dixie land, I'll keep my stand to live in. Well, what's everybody staring at me for? I didn't let them dogs in. Nobody said you did, Granny. <laughs> My own kin has turned against me, giving me the evil eye. You want to get shed of me because I'm old and ailing and all crippled up with the rheumatism and the lumbago. <laughs> Worn out in the service of my kin. Well, you don't have to put up with old granny anymore. I'm going to throw myself in the cement pond and drown. <laughs> and I won't be no more trouble to you. Don't nobody try and stop me. <laughs> Don't nobody try to stop me. <laughs> It's better this way. <laughs> then Pearl can have everything to herself. <laughs> well, Pearl, uh, you heard her. Reckon you better take over the kitchen. All right, Jed, I'll get right out there. You keep out of my kitchen. You don't stay out of my kitchen. I'm going to hit you so hard atop your head, you'll be able to ride half there. <laughs> if that poor old wore out, sick, crippled little woman ever gets her strength back, we better all look out. <laughs> Go get her, gang. Pay the usual reward. Granny, close that door. Okay. I only opened the door to let in a little fresh air. And a lot of dog. Well, I just can't take Pearl screeching any longer. Sounds like a pine knot in a sawmill. <laughs> Miss Drysdale has been complaining, too. Calls the police most every day. That ain't a bit neighborly, is it? Mr. Drysdale promised she wouldn't call no more. Now, Granny, you leave them dogs outside. Man, I thought that complaint would never come through. How could anyone complain about a thing as beautiful as Pearl's yodeling? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Besides, you're not well. <laughs> you let him in. I just know it's that nice policeman who's crazy about my yodeling. Well, I don't think so this morning, Perry. Oh, sure it is. Comes by pertinent every morning about now. Him and that young policeman. Oh, it is you. Come in. Thank you, Mr. Clavett. Morning, sir. Morning. Well, look who's here. Officer Dean. You can just call me Eddie, ma'am. Well, after you called me Pearl, Eddie. It'll be my pleasure, Pearl. <laughs> I got a brand new yodel to show you. <laughs> just so we won't disturb the peace. <laughs> you looking for Ellie May? Who? My daughter. Oh, no, sir. Where is she? <laughs> Out by the seaman pond? Pond? Oh, oh, you mean a swimming pool? Yeah, I reckon you could call it that. Ellie and Jethro swims in it. <laughs> I better get out there right away, Mr. Clampert. We've had a lot of reports about people stealing swimming pool water. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, pool furniture. <laughs> oh, yeah, you better get right out there and keep your eye on that furniture. You'll find her working with her dogs and cats and birds. Thank you. <laughs> Did you say dogs and cats and birds? Yeah, she's got her dogs and cats to be friends. Now she's working on the cats and birds. <laughs> Everybody can be friends if they just try. And you two is friends now. Just remember, Rusty, folks don't eat their friends. You two have a good ride and go show Granny how y'all made up. <laughs> A rheumatiz medicine I ever did cook up. <laughs> yes, sir. -y. That's first rate. <laughs> well, I commenced to seeing birds riding horseback on cats. That's enough tasting. <laughs> Hi, Granny. Oh, Ellie. Here, keep the fire going under my steel. I'm going up and rest a while. <laughs> Granny, you promised Paul you wouldn't run your steel no more. Mm, just to make a little rheumatism medicine. In case I wake up one of these bitter cold nights and get a seizure. <laughs> Granny, it don't get bitter cold out here. Jethro read in the newspaper where it's going to get 20 below tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, that's in Alaska. But if I wake up and think about it, I might get a seizure. Ellie May. Down here by the fire. Ellie May, what are you doing? Now, this is illegal. You can get arrested for this. I can't? Well, absolutely. Open fires aren't allowed in this area. <laughs> here, I'll be put it out. <laughs> How am I doing? Just fine. You got the makings of a first-rate yodeler. Thank you. Oh, say, I got to get back to the car and check in. Check in? On the radio. Come on, I'll show you. Oh, is it all right? Sure, come on. better resist an officer of the law. That's right. Just come along quietly. Remember, I've got a gun. <laughs> Uncle Jed, Granny, come quick. What is it, Jethro? That policeman arrested Ma. Arrested her? Yes, sir. He had her by the arm, but dragging her out to his police car. I'll go see if he's gone yet. I wouldn't have called the police if I thought... Granny, you mean you set the police on Pearl, your own kin? I reckon I did, Jed. I don't recollect it quite clear. I guess it's because I'm so old and sick and ailing and puny and frail and all crippled up with all right, the I don't start that again. Granny, I just can't understand you turning on your own kin. Well, it, it was just, it, it, it was the hot California sun that done it. That's what done it. It softened my poor old brain. <laughs> you ain't gonna throw me out of the clan, are you, Jed? Uncle Jed! He ain't took Ma away yet. They still out front. 
Maybe this time to right the wrong you've done. Oh, I will. I will. I'll do anything. Pearl! Pearl! I'm coming, Pearl! I'm coming! <laughs> I sure wish I could invite you into the kitchen for some coffee and vittles, but Granny's so mean and cantankerous when it comes to... Pearl! Forgive me. I'm the one that set the law on you. Please forgive me, Pearl. I'm so ashamed. Forgive me, Pearl. Don't let Jim throw me out of the class. You set the law on me? Oh, I'm low, Pearl. Awful low and mean. Step on me, Pearl. Step on me. Step on me like you would a worm. Trump on me. Grind your feet on me. Wake up. Thank you. Pearl. Mr. Policeman, run over me. I don't deserve to live. Run over me and throw my poor old mean body to the buzzard. All right, Granny, now that's enough. But Pearl hasn't forgiven me yet. Mr. Policeman, give your gun to Pearl and let her shoot me. Don't try me, stop that. Put a curse on me, Pearl. I forgive you, I forgive you. But I deserve to be punished, and punished bad. Sing to me, Pearl. Granny Pearl done says she forgives you. Am I taken back to the clan? Am I welcome to the bosom of my family? I reckon. Pearl, you are an angel. You can have anything I got any time. You can have any part of my kitchen. Throw me out of it. Set the dogs on me. Yes, so take, take your granny into the house, please. Sure, Ma. Did you want her? No, I didn't want her. Want me, Pearl? Oh, Jim, so take him in the house. Come on in the house and want me, Pearl. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Policeman, but Granny, you know, she gets worked up every now and then. I understand. Now, I can invite you in the kitchen to have some victuals and coffee. Oh, no, thanks. I see my partner coming. We better get moving. Well, young fella, you find anything missing? Oh, no, sir. She's got everything. I mean, everything was there. But that is around the pool. Well, you come back and see us here. We will. Just keep yodeling. <laughs> Bye now. Bye. Bye. See you when the roads get better. Bye-bye. It's quite a family, isn't it, Sergeant? As you young fellows would say, like, wow. I am. You know, here they are with all these millions in this big, beautiful mansion. And guess how they heat the water for the swimming pool? How? Well, they got this big, round kind of copper boiler, see? And, and coming out of the top is this kind of spout. And attached to that is this corkscrew tubing that goes down and leads into a big jar. Right. And they keep this fire going under this big water. Officer Kelly. But imagine how long it would take City you to... City boy. <laughs> yes, sir? You have just described a still. A what? A still. No wonder they got so much money. These people are moonshiners. <laughs> Bowl big enough, cause if it ain't, you just say the word and I'll fetch another. But, <laughs> Granny, you don't have to fetch and carry for me. It's my pleasure. <laughs> it's an honor to be in the same kitchen with such a good cook as you are. <laughs> what you making? My special sweet potato pie. Did you hear that, Jim? Did you hear what this beautiful cousin of yours is making? Yeah, I heard, Granny. Her, before I go on to my reward. Would you give me the receipt for that pie? I want to make it for the angels up yonder. That is, if they'll take me in after the shameful thing I've done today. Like setting the law on my own kin. A devil got into me, Pearl. Granny, don't go to ball and twist no harm done. But kin folks should stick together. That's the truth. Blood's thicker than water. Did you hear what you said? Did you hear what Jed said? That's the wisest thing I ever heard in all my life. Blood is thicker than water. Granny, I didn't make it up. But nobody ever said it like you said it, Jed. It makes me proud to belong to your clan. I do belong, don't I, Jed? Oh, bless you. Bless you both. I don't deserve such good kin. It's pure pleasure to see you all getting along at last. Reckon it takes a storm to bring out the rainbow. Did you hear what I said? Pearl! 
Don't strain yourself reaching for anything like that here. Stand on me. Oh, Frank, get off. You don't have to wait on me. But I've got to make up for what I've done to you, Pearl. Order me. Command me. Well, all right. Let me have a couple of pie tins. What else, Pearl? Uh, uh, hand me the flour. What else, Pearl? Well, Granny, uh, maybe you could help me later. Right now, I just would kind of like to be in the kitchen by myself. I understand. I've got some things outside I can tend to. <laughs> it's just I want this uh, tater pie to be special good for Eddie. Who? Officer Dean, good-looking policeman. Oh, I wouldn't get too sick with the law, Pearl. They can be awful nosy. Oh, Eddie and me's just yodeling acquaintances. So far. <laughs> Remember, Pearl, where there's the law, there's trouble. As sure as a goose goes barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a still, all right. There's no question about it. Well, that doesn't mean they're making moonshine. Maybe it's something harmless. <laughs> I'll show you how harmless it is. Come on. <laughs> Try a match. <laughs> Now toss the match in there. In the water? Toss it. <laughs> hey, Sarge. We're not gonna arrest Ellie May for this, are we? I'm sure she's not responsible for it. I don't think Pearl is either. Mr. Clampert seemed like such a wonderful man. It's probably Granny. Anybody who would lie down in front of a police car and say, run over me, has got to be gassed. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe Granny doesn't know it's wrong to make that stuff. That's possible. Pearl says she refuses to give up the customs of the hill. Well, looks like Pearl was right. Yeah, and there's Granny's old still to prove it. <laughs> Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Say, Pearl, you seen anything of them two policemen? Not since they left. Well, that's just it. They didn't. Their police car still out front. Oh, that Eddie. Oh, I hope he's not so gone on me that he's neglecting his duty. <laughs> oh, here's Granny. Back to help you, Pearl. Good. Granny, I need your rendering skillet. I'll see that you get it, Pearl. <laughs> see, I was just telling Pearl, Granny, that police car is still out front. I, I can't figure it myself, but Pearl seems to understand. Uh-huh. <laughs> Granny, did you find the skillet? Yeah, Pearl. Well, let me have it. Sure is heartwarming to see you, too. <laughs> Granny! What was that loud ringing noise? <laughs> Granny, why in the world did you... I heard the meal gong. It's been a... Oh! Don't touch her. She's tainted. Tainted? That's yours, the fancy new you meal gong and me and Skippy just... What happened? I pearl. Granny whomped her, and I reckon she better tell me how come right now. Youngins, you know the code of the hills. What is the lowest, meanest, traitorous thing a friend can do to his neighbor? Tell, tell the revenuers he's got to steal. Here sits the traitor that done it. She's the one that ain't fit to belong to the clan. Granny, you promised me you wouldn't make no more moonshine. I'm making medicine. Do you want me all gnarled up and twisted in the grip of my rheumatism? Is that the thanks I get for working my poor old fingers to the bone? Here comes the law. Two policemen. <gasps> Barricade the door. I'll get the table. They pour his body across it and we'll shoot from behind you. Oh. Eric, you get the flag. Jethro, you get the guns. And I'll throw knives at him till you get back. Nobody do nothing. We ain't gonna fight the law. We ain't gonna fight. What are we, a clan or a nest of mice? You heard me, Jethro. You and Ellie take some of that cold water, bring your maw to. I'll take care of the law. <laughs> Larry, we'd like to talk to you about that still down by the swimming pool. Yes, sir. I feared you'd catch me sooner or later. Well, I'm ready to go with you. I'll make no trouble. Are you the one who's running it? Me and me only. 
Paul ain't running it. It's me. That's my steel, ain't it, Jethro? No, sir. That's my steel. <laughs> Don't listen to these youngins. It's my steel. Now, come on. Arrest me. Let's get it over with. Well, that ain't true. If you want to know who that still belongs to, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Pearl. Put the handcuffs on me. Now, just a darn minute. Ain't nobody going to take credit for my work except me. And if it's again the law to make a little rheumatism medicine, then take me to the chain gang. Yeah, no, hey, that's mine. That's mine. Oh, hey, 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 that's mine. It's like we's all going to the chain gang. Nobody will go anywhere if Granny will promise to stop making rheumatism medicine. Well, I reckon what I made today will hold me through the winter. Well, I wouldn't count on that. You see, we accidentally spilled all the evidence into the swimming pool. Swimming pool? Oh, poor Charlie. Who's Charlie? My pet duck. Pick <laughs> <Take> him. <laughs> Just get some coffee to go in, Granny. Looks like we got a drunk duck on our hands. <laughs> One thing, he ain't never gonna be bothered with rheumatism. <laughs> <laughs>